What's going on everybody? C4 here and welcome back to the Madden 20 Ratings Prediction Series where today we're going to be taking a look at the Carolina Panthers who are going to be an interesting team next year. I think if you're looking for a team that we want to rebuild for maybe only two, three years, Panthers could be a top priority. But for me, always, it's Cam Newton. He never does well in the sim for me particularly and probably most of you guys. It seems like that is a pretty common trend that Cam Newton, Matt Stafford, Derek Carr, just to name a few, Andrew Luck to an extent, are your cursed quarterbacks. No matter what happens in the sim, they never play particularly well. But hey, if you're playing all your games, Cam Newton's always very fun to use. But let's take a look here at how I think their roster is going to shape up on release for Madden 20. At quarterback, we'll give Cam Newton an 84 overall. His rating's always going to be skewed and, and debated upon because of the physical stats, his running ability, which is how it plays in to the Madden rating system. But I mean, if you look on field, Last season, 3,400 yards, 24 touchdowns, 13 picks. Also added just under 500 rushing yards, four touchdowns. Like, that's a down year for Cam Newton. You know, I think 84 is about as good as he should get until he can prove that maybe this offseason surgery, he can get back to that MVP form. But for the time being, man, he is always one of the most overrated quarterbacks when it comes to a Madden overall rating standpoint. But then again, he's always one of the fun quarterbacks to use. And, you know, you'll get Will Greer back there too. Nice little uh, surprising draft pick with five years experience because these rosters are phenomenal. Uh, running back, we got Christian McCaffrey, who I'm going to give a 94 overall. I think he's debatably, I think he's up for grabs for one of the best running backs in the National Football League. So dynamic, almost 2,000 yards from scrimmage, 13 touchdowns last year, which included 107 receptions. Ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. I think that bottom, bottom of the line, he's a top five running back. I personally think he's closer to top three than he is top five because of what he can bring to the offense. He is everything that the people that said he shouldn't have been drafted as a first round pick. The people that said that he's not a running back, he's everything that they said he wasn't and more. The fact that he's a great runner between the tackles, he's elusive, and he can do all the catching stuff that he kind of got pigeonholed. And uh, I don't know, we're not going to go, we're not going to go down a rabbit hole of saying, you know, anything else about Christian McCaffrey and why people said he wasn't going to be a running back. But I think he's simply sensational. One of my favorite players in the National Football, maybe my favorite running back in the National Football League right now. He's up there. He's up there with like Todd Gurley, and um, but yeah, and they got they got some nice running backs: Jordan Scarlett, Elijah Holyfield for young rookies. See what they can do. At wide receiver, we have DJ Moore, who we're going to give an 81 overall. Last season, 960 yards from scrimmage, two total touchdowns. Obviously, you want the TDs to go up a little bit, but he's a dynamic playmaker. I think he's only going to get better in that offense. Curtis Samuel, gadget-type player of Ohio State, actually finally put, put together a good year last year. We gave him a 78. He had 560 yards from scrimmage, seven total touchdowns. Uh, they brought in Chris Hogan and Torrey Smith. Uh, Jarius Wright had some decent production. I think he got like 400 yards-ish last season. Uh, all, they got um, Rash Rashad Ross. Shout out to the AAF. He was like the AAF all-star at wide receiver. See if he can catch on. At tight end, Greg Olson. We got to give it. I think his base roster was like a 90 from the end of Madden 19. And as much as I think Greg Olson is very, very good, he's like his toes. What the heck? It seems like every year he misses like six games plus for like toe injury. So because of the injuries, we're going to have to take him a little bit of a regression, knock him down to an 88. But when healthy, even at his age of 34, one of the best tight ends in the National Football League. Offensive line, we got Taylor Moten. We give him a 78. Greg Little, 73. Ben Rotten, 70. Matt Paradis coming over from the Denver Broncos. Gets an 83. That was a great free agency pickup. Trey Turner, 82. And Daryl Williams, 82. Nice one-year deal uh, for the Panthers to bring him back. On the defensive side, you got Bruce Irvin. We'll give him a 77. You know, he's just solid, kind of one-dimensional at this point in his career, but still can help the Panthers a little bit. We have Mario Addison. We're going to give him an 83 overall. Last season, Mario Addison, nine sacks, 11 tackles for loss. So, you know, he's, he's good. Uh, is he going to be able to stand in his own with no more Julius Peppers on the opposing side? We will have to wait and find out. I guess a question could be, say, is Brian Burns going to play defensive end or outside linebacker for the Panthers? For the sake of these rosters, they had him an outside linebacker. We just kept him there. But he could actually be in contention to start over Bruce Irvin if he has a strong training camp. In the inside, we give Kwan Short an 87 overall. Three sacks, 12 TFLs last year for Short. A little bit of a down year for him. But and we will take a little bit of regression. I think his last base roster was an 89. Knock him down to an 87, and I'm sure... If we, you know, he'll probably be able to put together a good string of games. They just recently signed, like yesterday, Gerald McCoy reportedly took like half as less guaranteed money to join the Panthers than the Ravens. I assume because he's pissed off 
about the Nanamik and Sue thing and the Bucks getting rid of him and Sue coming in and taking his number right away. He's getting 86. Again, he's kind of coming off a down year, but I think generally speaking, with Don Terry Poe, even though the ages aren't great for a rebuild, they definitely have one of the best, if not the best, in terms of depth alone, interior defensive lines in the National Football League. Going to linebacker, of course, Shaq Thompson will get an 81 overall last season, 79 tackles, three and a half sacks, four TFLs, great athletic linebacker sideline to sideline. Luke Keekley is getting a 98 just because I'm saving the 199 at the linebacker spot for a certain Seattle Seahawk. But Luke Keekley, I would not be shocked. And, you know, if, if, if I knew we could be careless by tossing around 99s and we knew that Madden 20 wasn't going to have a lowered rating scale, I'd probably give Keekley a 99 as well. Last season was spectacular. 130 tackles, a pick, two sacks. Um, no, yeah, two sacks. 20, 20 tackles for loss. Ridiculous. He's still, he's still as good as it gets in the game. And I'm, I'm fingers crossed, man, there's no more uh, concussion, head injury, injury issues with him. Uh, Brian Burns coming in. We're at 71. It's, that's a little low. We're actually going to show you a little bit of a modification because these are the base rosters. And I don't know why he's 71. Maybe I moved him to D-end. But uh, Brian Burns, very good athlete. Bumpus finesse moves up. Very has a, has a nice array of finesse moves. Play rack. He's a first-round pick, so he's going to have mid-60s. Power moves aren't great. Speed's fine. Strength, he's not the strongest. We'll bump him up just a little bit there. So what's that bringing to? 73. You know, I'm going to make his prediction. I think Brian Burns is probably going to be 75, 76, somewhere in that territory. You can make his coverage a little bit better because he is a great athlete. His tackling is solid. Uh, make his, you know, up that a little bit. How about that? Where does that take him? 76, there you go. That's, that's about where Brian Burns should be. His major athletic stats were on point and still had him at a 71. So, uh, good, good fit. He's going to be a nice little user edge outside linebacker dn however you want to play him on your panthers personally knowing me i would move him to defensive end and you have someone like christian miller we're getting a 70 that was a great pickup out of alabama uh, he could play outside linebacker so personally if you're asking me i would have brian burns at the end look at the secondary james bradbury will give him an 81 overall last season he had one interception 15 pass breakups and 70 tackles pair that with a very good rookie season from dante jackson at lsu we're giving him an 81 Four interceptions, which I think was the most out of all the rookie corners. Nine pass breakups and 74 tackles. Free safety, got Mike Adams, ageless wonder himself. I'm pretty sure he's returned back to the Carolina Panthers. He actually had a decent year last year, so we'll give him a 77. And then Eric Reed at Strong City. While he is so annoying, he's such an asshole on the field. And I mean, I know he's kind of polarizing off the field. He's still really good. I'll give him an 80 overall. Interception, five pass breakups, 70 tackles last season. Special teams, Grand Gano getting 83, Michael Pallardy, 81. Good special teams unit there for the Panthers. So I think the Panthers, low-key, I guess it does really depend on the health of Cam Newton and how quickly he can, if it's possible, he can get back to that MVP form. But I think the Panthers are a little bit of a dark horse in the NFC next season, and uh, it, it's all going to be on Cam Newton. If Cam Newton can put it all together, he can definitely lead this team into the playoffs without a shadow of doubt. If he can lead the team that he had when they won the MVP, which I think wasn't as talented as this roster, I think he could probably do it if that surgery was a success. So what do you guys think about these Panther ratings? Let me know if you agree or disagree in the comment section below. As always, if you're first time stopping by, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. Smash the like button if you enjoyed. And until next time, it's C4 saying peace out.